Hey, I'm Michael. Before I dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales like mine. It was a crisp morning in September when I received the call that would change my life forever. The voice on the other end was brisk, professional, but unmistakably excited. Michael, congratulations! We'd like you to join us as the general manager at our construction firm here in London. It's a huge opportunity. I remember my heart racing with a mix of elation and anxiety. This was the break I'd been working toward my entire career. I paced back and forth in the kitchen, my mind racing through the possibilities. But there was a significant hurdle to consider. My family. Later that evening, I sat down with my wife, Sarah, and our two kids. I could barely contain my enthusiasm as I explained the job offer. It's an incredible position, and it's in London. Think about all the experiences we'd have, the places we'd see. Sarah looked at me with a mix of surprise and concern. London? Michael, the kids are just settled in school, and we have our whole life here. Do you really think we can just pack up and leave? Our daughter Emily chimed in, her voice tinged with teenage angst. Dad, I've got friends here. I can't just leave everything behind. Our son Josh, who was usually the quiet one, looked visibly upset but didn't say much, clearly unhappy with the thought of leaving his life behind. The room felt incredibly heavy as I tried to muster up a defense. But think about the opportunities for all of us. It's not just about the job. It's a chance for a new adventure, a new life. We can visit places we've only read about, experience a new culture. Sarah cut me off, her voice firm. I know it's a great opportunity for you, but it's not just about you. We have to think about what's best for the entire family. I don't feel right pulling the kids out of their environment. The discussion went back and forth, the room growing tenser with each passing minute. Eventually, it became clear that no amount of persuasion would change their minds. They were adamant about staying, and the thought of uprooting their lives was too overwhelming for them. I spent that night in the spare room, my mind a whirlwind of thoughts. Was I being selfish? Was chasing my dream worth the cost of my family's happiness? After a week of tense discussions and sleepless nights, I made one of the hardest decisions of my life. With a heavy heart, I accepted the job in London, alone. The decision led to our separation, and eventually, the divorce. As I boarded the plane to London, I felt a mix of excitement and a profound sense of loss. I was starting a new chapter, but at what cost? That move marked the beginning of a new era in my life, filled with its own challenges and triumphs. But deep down, I knew nothing would ever replace the family I had left behind. The first few months in London were a blur of long days and quiet evenings. Stepping into the office on my first day, the weight of my new role as general manager hit me. The team looked expectantly as I introduced myself, their faces a mix of curiosity and skepticism. Good morning, everyone. I'm looking forward to working together and bringing fresh energy to our projects. Let's aim to not only meet, but exceed our targets. A senior colleague, David, approached me later, his tone polite but guarded. It's great to have you with us, Michael. Just so you know, the team is tight-knit. It might take some time for everyone to adjust to new management. Understood, David. I'm here to learn and adapt as much as I am to lead. Let's make this transition smooth for everyone. Adjusting to life in London was tougher than I expected. The city was vibrant, but the loneliness was palpable. Weekends were the hardest. I'd walk through bustling markets or sit in parks watching families and couples. The joy of their simple interactions a stark reminder of what I'd left behind. One evening at a local pub, I tried striking up a conversation with the bartender Lucy, a friendly face I'd come to recognize. So, Lucy... Any recommendations for someone new to London looking to understand the real city? She smiled, pouring a pint. Start with the small galleries and local music scenes. Don't just stick to the tourist tracks. And if you ever need company, a lot of us meet up after shifts for a night out. Grateful for the gesture, I started joining Lucy and her friends. It wasn't long before I began to feel a part of something, the initial isolation slowly dissipating. Back at work, the challenges kept mounting. The firm was facing a crucial bid, and the pressure was immense. During one late-night session, David walked into my office, his face grim. The numbers don't look good, Michael. We might lose this if we can't find a more competitive edge. 
Poring over spreadsheets and project plans, we worked tirelessly. What if we revise the supply chain logistics, trim the fat and propose a more aggressive timeline? David looked over the figures, his expression slowly changing. This might just work. You're really pushing us here, Michael. As the weeks turned into months, the team's skepticism turned into respect. The day we won the bid, the office erupted in cheers. David clapped me on the back, a wide grin spreading across his face. You really pulled us through, Michael. Couldn't have done it without your push. That night, as I walked home under the London stars, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pride. I was making it on my own, despite everything. The city no longer felt quite so foreign, nor the evenings quite so lonely. Years had passed, and I had settled into my life in London, feeling more at home with each passing day. Then, one lazy Sunday afternoon, my phone buzzed with a message that would stir the depths of my settled peace. Hi, Michael. It's Sarah. Emily and Josh have been asking about you a lot lately. They're older now, and they want to understand everything that happened. Could we talk? Seeing Sarah's name on my screen after all these years churned up a mix of emotions. I took a deep breath and typed back, Of course, let's set up a call. The video call was awkward at first. Sarah looked much the same though lines of time now framed her eyes. Emily had blossomed into a young woman, and Josh was taller than I remembered, almost a man now. Hey, Dad, Emily started, her voice tentative. We've been wondering why you left, why you chose your job over us. I swallowed hard, the weight of her words hitting me like a physical blow. I never wanted to leave you. I thought I was doing what was best for everyone, giving us a future, but maybe I was wrong. I'm sorry if it hurt you. Josh chimed in, his tone more curious than accusatory. Do you ever regret it, going away and all? Every day, I thought. Yes, I do, but it also gave me opportunities to build something I can hopefully share with you both someday. I've always missed you. Sarah spoke up, her voice softer. We've seen how well you've been doing. The kids are proud, even if it's been hard. We just needed to hear your side of things. Thank you for giving me the chance to explain. I've always hoped to make it right with you all somehow. We don't want to hold any grudges, Dad, Emily said. Maybe we could visit you in London, see your life there. The thought of them visiting filled me with a mix of joy and anxiety. I'd like that very much. There's a lot I want to show you, a lot for us to catch up on. The conversation went on for over an hour. We spoke about everything from school and work to my life in London and their lives back home. It felt like a door long closed was creaking open, the rusty hinges of past grievances giving way to a tentative hope for reconciliation. As we said goodbye, Sarah gave me a small, genuine smile. It's good to see you doing well, Michael. Let's not let so much time pass before we talk again. The call ended, and I sat back, feeling a mix of relief and melancholy. The bridge wasn't fully mended, but perhaps now there was a pathway where before there had been only a chasm. In the whirlwind of reconnecting with my family, life brought another unexpected gift my way. Lisa, a colleague who had joined the firm a year ago, gradually became a constant in my life. Her laughter filled spaces I didn't even know were empty, and her insight into the world, our shared profession, and life was refreshing. One evening, after a particularly challenging project meeting, Lisa and I decided to grab dinner at a small Italian place near the office. You were brilliant today, Michael. The way you handled the client's concerns was, well, it was something to see. I smiled, feeling a warmth spread through me. Thanks, Lisa. Couldn't have gotten through all that without your prep work. You make a great team. As we talked over pasta and wine, the conversation drifted from work to more personal territories. You know, Lisa, I confessed, after my divorce, I wasn't sure I'd find someone who could really understand me, not just the good parts, but all the messy bits that come with me. Michael, we've all got our messy bits. You've seen some of mine, too. It's about finding someone who doesn't mind when things get a bit complicated. Her words struck a chord within me. As our relationship grew, I found in Lisa not just a partner, but a true companion. She had an uncanny ability to make me laugh when things were tough, and her strength was something I came to rely on. Months later, I proposed to Lisa during a quiet, private moment at home, 
surrounded by the life we were starting to build together. Her yes was immediate and joyful, and our marriage marked a new chapter of happiness and stability in my life. Lisa encouraged me to fully embrace this new beginning. We hosted gatherings at our home, inviting friends and colleagues, and even my children Emily and Josh when they visited. Seeing Lisa blend seamlessly with my London life and my family from back home was profoundly healing. One sunny Saturday, as Lisa and I strolled through Hyde Park, I found myself reflecting on the journey. You know, I never thought I'd get a second chance at happiness like this, I told her, squeezing her hand. Lisa smiled, her eyes crinkling at the corners. Life has a funny way of surprising us, Michael. I'm just glad our paths crossed when they did. With Lisa by my side, I felt a renewed sense of purpose and joy. The stark contrast between my past struggles and my current contentment was not lost on me. Together, we built a life that was rich in love and laughter, firmly rooted in the present, but always respectful of the past. As I let go of old resentments and embraced my new reality, I found that life could indeed be forgiving, and the future was something to look forward to with hope rather than fear. After years of building a new life in London, the opportunity arose for Lisa and me to visit my home country. It was a trip laden with significance, a chance to reconcile fully with my past and share my new world with Lisa. Upon arriving, the familiar sights and scents of my hometown stirred a mix of nostalgia and renewal. Lisa, ever the explorer, was eager to see everything through my stories. Show me where you grew up, Michael, where you went to school, where you and Sarah met, she urged, her enthusiasm infectious. As we walked through the streets of my old neighborhood, pointing out landmarks and sharing anecdotes, I felt a deep sense of peace. It was like introducing Lisa to an old version of myself one that had been waiting to be acknowledged and then let go. The climax of our visit was a family gathering hosted by Sarah. It was a testament to how far we had all come. Sarah, Emily, Josh, and extended family members were there, all eager to meet Lisa and learn about our life in London. During the gathering, Josh raised his glass to make a toast. To Dad, who's shown us that it's never too late to change your story. We're proud of who you've become, not just in your career, but as a person. Emily added, and to Lisa for bringing so much joy into Dad's life and ours. We're grateful for both of you. The room echoed with cheers and warm smiles. The moment was more than a simple acknowledgement. It was a profound acceptance of all the phases of my life, woven together into a tapestry of growth and redemption. Later, standing by the window with Lisa, watching the party continue inside, I reflected on everything that had led to this moment. You know, Lisa, I used to think that moving to London was the end of everything familiar. But now I see it was just the beginning of understanding and embracing the full spectrum of life. Every step led you here, Michael. And I'm so glad it did. As we prepared to leave, Sarah pulled me aside. Michael, seeing you today, happy and healed, it means a lot to all of us. Thank you for keeping the door open. The journey back to London felt lighter than the flight out had. I was returning not just to my current life, but with a renewed connection to my roots and a clearer vision of my future. As the plane soared above the clouds, I realized that my story wasn't just about finding success or even overcoming hardships. It was about embracing each chapter, learning from it, and moving forward with an open heart. Contentment and love had indeed found a place in a life once filled with conflict. I knew that this chapter of my life, filled with peace and understanding, was just the beginning of many more to come. As we close the chapter on Michael's journey of transformation and reconciliation, it's fascinating to consider the choices we make and their long-term impacts on our lives and those around us. What do you think about Michael's decision to move abroad for his career? Was it a selfish choice, or was it the right thing to do for his own growth, even though it initially led to painful separations? Please share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. If you faced a similar decision, how did it turn out for you and your loved ones? Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed Michael's story, and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content like this. Your support helps us bring more stories that make us think, feel, and connect. Thank you for watching.